Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this video, we're going to be working on the space shooter. We are going to be implementing movement code into our player. So let's roll the introduction and get right into it. <laughs> The first thing I want to do is download the sample project found in the description below. Now let's open up our room and see what's inside. Inside the main room, we have a single object, and to find this object, we'll go into the setup. Then I'm using the new version of Game Maker, so I have an inspector window. In the inspector window, you can see that we have a room setup object, and inside this object is where all of our instances are being created. So for example, we have the object player here, which will be created at runtime. So let's switch over to the object player inside the assets. Let's open up object player and in the create event and step event. These are the two that we're going to be working with. You can see that we have some boost cooldown, horizontal speed, some maximum speed, acceleration and deceleration, which is all the normal things. We're going to be using these variables to implement our movement code. So let's switch over to the step event and we already have some regions set up. So we're going to be coding inside the movement region. What we want to do is check for some horizontal input and we can do this by using a keyboard check and checking the right key minus the left key, which will give us a value between negative one and one. Now that we have that value, we can check the horizontal input to see if we are pressing any keys. If we are pressing some keys, then what we want to do is change our horizontal speed to be whatever key we are pressing left or right times the acceleration. So this will build up eventually to the maximum speed. And that means we also should check if the speed is going to be bigger than the negative or positive maximum movement speed that we have. We don't want our player going too crazy, so let's make sure that we clamp it. Inside the else statement, meaning if we aren't pressing any keys, we'll check to see if our horizontal speed is bigger than our deceleration. And if that is the case, what we want to do is take away the deceleration value from our horizontal speed, slowing us down. Now, because we can move left and right, we need to also do the inverse, meaning that we need to check if our horizontal speed is less than the negative value of deceleration. And if it is, we want to add deceleration to the horizontal speed, which in turn will slow us down again. The final thing we need to do, and this is just a catch all, is to make our horizontal speed equal zero if none of these values are acceptable. Now to get our player moving, all we have to do is add that horizontal speed onto our X value. If I run my game, our ship is going to appear and I should be able to move left and right. Now the problem is, is that we can go off the screen to the left and also off the screen to the right. Let's close our game and fix that. The easiest way to fix this is before we add the horizontal speed to our X value, let's store that speed into a temporary variable. The next thing we want to do is check for the left side. So we'll check to see if that temporary variable is going to be less than what our sprite width is. This is approximately 32 pixels, so we don't want to be going beyond 32 pixels. If you fall into this category, meaning we are on the left side, we'll go ahead and set our horizontal speed to zero, and we'll just set our X position to the sprite width. Now we need to do it on the right side. Now this is a little bit more confusing because we are using some camera zoom. But basically, we are taking the temporary variable, comparing it to the room width times whatever zoom we have at the camera, and then minusing the sprite width, which will get us the right side. And just like before, if we are going to pass that variable, then we need to set our horizontal speed to zero, and then we'll just set our X position to the right side of the room. We'll finish it off by closing our brackets. And if we hit F5 to run our game, we should be able to again move left and right. You can see that we can't go beyond the boundaries of the room. Now there's two things I want to actually add into this before we end it. The first is going to be the boost. So in order to boost, we have to be pressing the left or right key. This means we'll make sure we're in our horizontal input does not equal zero. So this is pressing left or right. And in here, we want to make sure that the player is pressing the boost key, which in our case is the shift key. I'm going to be using a cooldown. You could be using an array, but we'll set our variable boost cooldown to zero. And if you're not familiar where that came from, we'll go over to the create event and you can see here at the bottom, we have a cooldown of zero. We'll switch back to the step event. And after we check the cooldown, let's set some variables. We'll set our movement maximum speed to be whatever it is times four. We'll set our horizontal speed to be something ridiculous, knowing that the clamp is going to slow it down for us. And then we'll set an internal timer using the global boost cooldown. And if you don't know where the global boost cooldown comes from, it's in the object in it, and you can see we have it right here on line nine. Switching back to the object player, the only other thing I want to do when we use the boost is play a sound, and now I can end these two if statements. Now, right now, if we were to boost our player, we wouldn't be able to boost again because we're not counting down the cooldown. 
let's scroll down to the next region that we have which is in the boost we want to make sure that if the boost cooldown is bigger than zero then we'll remove a tick from that boost the other thing we need to do is make sure our maximum move speed is going to go back to the original again these are variables found in the create event and you can see that we are using the lerp command and we will just slowly move the speed back and now if i run my game you can see that i can still move left and right and i can use the shift key here to give myself a boost now because of the logic that we used inside our movement code i cannot boost outside the room so everything is working perfectly there's one more thing that i want to add and that's just a little bit of juice we'll close our game and right before we add to the horizontal speed let's take our image angle and make it the opposite value of horizontal speed this means that if our horizontal speed is negative one we are going to multiply negative one by negative one which will make it a positive number now this little line of code, all it's really doing is changing the angle that we're able to turn at. So now we have a little bit of juice in our game. So the player is turning a little bit to the left and also a little bit to the right. The same with boosting. Now that we have some simple player movement code, the next thing we'll do in the next video is gonna be working on the player bullets and we'll go from there. I wanna thank you for watching. I want to thank you for watching this video. If you like what you see and you want more of it, show some of that by clicking the like button. I'd like to thank the following users on Patreon. Ken, Game Maker Community, David, Mary, Robert, Victor, Ashby, and Paul. Once again, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.